Okay, today we're going to talk about my haul from the junkyard yesterday. Spent a couple hours at the junkyard and it doesn't look like I got very much. Uh, this is $24 worth of stuff, but um, it's really kind of handy. A lot of little things. Uh, door spring. The driver's side door has no spring in it, so it swings closed automatically, which is really annoying. Uh, these are just some GM fasteners. Nice to have a few extras around. Most everything nowadays is metric, so it's nice to have some extra fasteners in case you run into some. Uh, these are the fasteners to hold the alternator on. They were missing on the motor that I had for some reason, so got those. Uh, door jam switch and the original wiring on it, so I can splice that in. Uh, this is off a uh, early 90s Chevy truck PCV valve and hose. Uh, just fits nicely, so I'll have that. Uh, rubber boot for the back of the alternator. This is for the uh, charge cord the charge cable that's coming out of the alternator. So nice rubber boot for on top of that. Uh, a few bolts for the front accessory drive. This was, uh, this is the rear port for the back of the power steering pump. Um, I needed that. The truck that I got out of was new enough that there was a, an electronic, uh, there was an electronic part that I just dropped on the ground. Uh, so this is a variable pressure pump because of this electronic solenoid. I have no way of controlling that so I just went with the old school. Fortunately these uh, pumps have been around for since the mid 60s so I was able to scavenge that. Speaking of pumps this is the low pressure line that's going to come out of the power steering hose, power steering pump and then I'll put a hose that goes over to the pump. Should be able to make that with no problem. We'll get back to power steering. Uh, this is a Ford inertia switch. So I'm going to have an electric fuel pump on this thing. And this switch is for crash. If you run into a brick wall, this will kill the uh, electric fuel pump so you're not spraying fuel out. Uh, one of the nice things about getting parts from the junkyard, I could have bought this at the auto parts store for a couple bucks more, but uh, I got the pigtail from the wiring harness, so that's good. And I got the OEM fasteners, which is very nice because I can drop them in, drill a couple holes, and voila, we're off to the races with it. Uh, a couple 1157 sockets, we'll show those later. They're for the rear wiring harness, I'll need those. Uh, spark plug wire because I had one that was a little bit short so I'm going to extend one or use that instead of another one. Uh, the other big thing that I got at the junkyard yesterday was information. So power steering hose. I've been trying to figure out how I'm going to get the power, what power steering hose I want to use because I got a truck motor, Chevelle chassis, blah 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 blah. So I searched around, I took some photos of the car, took them with me and started looking around and I found that an 86 Cutlass has the exact power steering high pressure hose that I want. So I'm going to order one of those from the auto parts store this week. The one that was in the car was crusty and rusty and I don't want to use that. So, But at least I got information on it. And the other thing is the upper radiator hose. We're going to the car now. The upper radiator hose on this uh, normal small block Chevy, the Chevelle, the radiator hose would come through here and over the radiator. Well, some Yahoo put an air conditioner there. So the motor, the hose that came on the motor wraps around here and comes out, which works good, but I wasn't quite sure what size I wanted, how it would work. So I went looking around and the pickup trucks have a radiator that comes all the way over to here. My radiator comes to about here. So their hose comes all the way here. I might be able to get that to work, but after looking around for a little while, uh, I found a van. Van chassis has the same hose, wraps around, same motor, same compressor, but it, the radiator isn't as wide. So the truck has an offset of nine inches. The van only has an offset of five inches. So I'm gonna order one of those hoses and see how that works out. So while we're at the car, the other update I wanted to show was, look at this. Ooh, ah, I am so excited. Uh, I was really getting nervous that I wasn't going to be able to figure out how to make this block work. So this is the original block. I, I needed to rotate that thing, so I decided, okay, $50 part, if I throw it away, I throw it away. If you look here, there are, they're not showing up on camera, there they are, a couple marks. So I just took a hacksaw and sliced through this, that 
that one. I just sliced through it with a hacksaw and then I took the one connector, turned it a little over 180 degrees and then I'm not going to say that I'm really proud of my aluminum welding but that's my first ever aluminum weld and I just welded it back together because that joint there is not critical it just keeps it from rotating so now one hose can take off that way and then this hose can come over and hit the evaporator that's a long update so that'll give you an idea what's going on sorry about all the wind noise in the background it is windy today good day to be in the barn so thanks for watching we'll let you know when we got more